Hey, welcome to the What's Your Story podcast. We have Jace Murdoch with us today. Hello. <laughs> and we're just going to get to know who Jace is. And I actually don't know like anything about you. Mm-hmm. So have you ever seen those Vogue YouTube videos? <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. Well, anyways, so they select like famous people, celebrities, and then they're like 50 questions in four minutes with so-and-so. So So we're not going to do it that way, but I just have a lot of questions and I'm just going to go through all of these. Um, Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. So who are you? (laughs) Um, I'm Jace Murdoch. Uh, I'm an accounting student. I'm, oh, I'm uh, the ward clerk. I should probably say that first. Um, and yeah, I'm studying accounting at Weber State and I'm working at Golden West in the accounting department, just, uh, all kinds of, um, financial organization stuff going on with me, I guess. We were talking about accounting before this and what's your goal with that? Um, I don't have a very specific goal in mind. I just want to have a decent good job um and it's something that just trying it out at Weber State I found that I enjoyed it I kind of like the just like organizing data and keeping track of things making sure information is all correct something about that's kind of satisfying for me cool you're a kind of a numbers guy uh I guess kind of I I don't know if I'd say numbers particularly like I don't I'm I don't like math. I hate math. Everybody, <laughs> That's funny. Everybody, when I tell them I'm studying accounting, they think, like, pretty much the first thing they say is like, oh, you must like math. And I'm like, no, I hate math. It's awful. <laughs> but accounting math isn't hard. It's just, uh, I don't know, just kind of, yeah, that idea of keeping things organized, keeping track of how everything connects together and mm-hmm. understanding how it all works. I like. That's cool. Like solutions and yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense. So I have a question here. Three ways to describe yourself. Like three words, we'll say. Okay. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm indecisive. I okay. <laughs> I can't think of th- three things. I don't know how I describe myself. I'm. It doesn't have to be um, three words. You could just describe yourself. Okay. Uh, I think I'm kind of, kind of weird. Oh my. <laughs> so weird know. is one of the words. Sure. Yeah, I guess, yeah, weird could be one of the words, but everybody's weird. No, when I was younger, I used to say, you're not cool unless you're weird. Because <laughs> yeah. everyone's like, everyone is weird in their own way. And that makes you fun. And yeah, that's a good motto. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, uh. I think I'm a pretty, I'll say pensive could be another word. I'm a, what I'm does a thoughtful, pensive mean? Like thoughtful person, I okay. guess. I do a lot of thinking. Um, kind of, I don't know, I get kind of lost in my own world a lot of the time, I feel like. And I'm generally just a pretty relaxed, easygoing person, I think. Do you like reading? I do, yeah. When you said, I get lost in my own world, I feel like that's something you'd like to do. Read. Yeah, that's probably, that probably makes a lot of sense. I do like reading. I like uh, storytelling. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Do you like storytelling like yourself? Uh, Well, no, I'm not really myself, but I like listening to other stories, I'd say. What are some of your favorite stories right now? Uh, Right now, I'm listening to a lot of Brandon Sanderson books. Uh, I haven't heard of him. He's he's a he's a pretty big author. He's mostly known for doing like really big fantasy books. Um, but I discovered him like right after I got home from my mission, and I've just been. He has he writes. He's like a crazy writer. He writes so many books all the time that it's kind of hard to keep up. It's kind of insane how much he puts out, but it's all really good. I'm really enjoying it. Brandon Sanderson. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at him. Um, so you wouldn't just we're gonna get vulnerable here, but you wouldn't describe yourself as confident. No, I wouldn't. That's funny because before we started this podcast, I was saying that I think you have this very like calm confidence, like quiet confidence about you. Hmm. Um, so I guess that's a compliment for you. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's news to me. I didn't know I put off that kind of vibe at all. Especially when all everyone is like talking to you and the activity with all the the bishopric, mm-hmm. like asking all those questions, us asking you questions. It just felt like you were very confident. So well, good, 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 for yeah. good for you. Good for you. I don't I don't feel that way at all. I'm really? always like panicking the whole time. Really? Kind of. You did not look scared. Like <laughs> if I was up there, this is funny, but when I give a talk, like I purposely wear a turtleneck because I get red like all over oh, my really? neck. <laughs> yeah, it's a redhead thing. But anyways, so hmm. at least you didn't get red. <laughs> yeah, I felt red. You did? Oh, yeah. I didn't look um, like it. That's good to know. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. So I know you went on on a mission. Mm -hmm. So I would like to just ask you a little bit more about that and like a situation that really helped you realize that God was there for you. Um, Well, there are probably lots. Yeah. there, There are too many. I don't know one to pick um i mean i shared one yesterday um so i'm not going to share that one at, at the uh yeah, at veggie activity we did um another one i remember <clears throat> i think i was in that same area uh i was serving so my mission was posadas, posadas mm-hmm. Ar- argentina which was a really cool mission because half of it was in argentina and half of it was in paraguay and down the middle along the border, there was just this really big river called the Parana. Mm. And generally what would happen in that mission is you'd spend half of your mission in one country and then cross over the river and go to the other. It's mm. been half of it there. Cool. And I started in Argentina and pretty much everybody, like both my trainers had started in Paraguay. And everybody I talked to who had been to Paraguay said that it was so much better than Argentina. Like the people are so much more humble and accepting and like you can like buy more stuff there. Argentina, like they don't allow a lot of outside imports really. Mm. So like you can't find simple things like, I don't know, like just like a Hershey's chocolate bar would be hard to find in Argentina. Or Interesting. Like um, so everybody, they always talk about how Paraguay is so much better and cooler and how the people in Argentina are super prideful. Um, and so I really struggled in the beginning of my mission because I really wanted to go to Paraguay. And I thought I was having a really hard time in Argentina. Like I said, like, I'm not a confident person. I'm not very good at making conversation. And so being on a mission was super hard for me because of that. <clears throat> and I just kept wishing that I could just go to, to Paraguay already where people said it was easier. And I remember one time, I think I actually like said a prayer and asked God like, Hey, could you send me to Paraguay, please? <laughs> I don't want to be here in Argentina. Um, and I just, uh, I don't remember if it happened immediately after that, but shortly after that, I had an impression to just open up the scriptures and read a random verse. And I opened up in the Bible, I think it was in, it was like in one of the later Moses uh, books. Uh, But it was talking about how Moses was like looking at the promised land. He was looking over the the Jordan River. Hmm. And God told him like, you shall not cross this Jordan. And (laughs) that's funny. That was kind of ominous to me. I was like, because just the way it's, it's worded, like you, like you shall not cross this Jordan made it sound to me like he was saying like, this this river here, you're not going to go past it. You're staying on this side of the river. You don't get to go there. That's not your job. Wow. Um, and at first I was like, huh, that's, that's kind of weird because that just didn't happen. Um, but as it turned out, later on in my mission, uh, we found out that they were going to be separating the two sides. That, uh-huh. uh, Yeah, that uh, the Posadas mission was going to be dissolved. There's no way. And go to either side and you just stay on whichever side you ended up in. And at that point, I was well over a year in my mission, but I still didn't end up crossing over. So I spent my entire mission in Argentina. And when I first asked God to send me to Paraguay, <laughs> it was kind of a selfish thing. But looking back, I'm so glad that he didn't. Because, um, my, you know, it made me realize that when I read that scripture, it made me realize, well, it made me anticipate that 
maybe I wouldn't go. And that made me start thinking like, well, okay, I might go, I might not, but I should just appreciate what I'm doing right here, right now. Um, and so I started to devote myself more to serving people of Argentina. Um, and now looking back, like I love Argentina so much. I love the people there so much. And I'm so glad that I got to spend my entire mission there. It would have been cool to see Paraguay. <laughs> but when I think of all the people I wouldn't have met if I had crossed over, I'm just so glad that that didn't happen. So. I think that's hilarious that... I feel like God has a sense of humor because yeah. that's like so specific. Yeah. Wow. Um, have you gone back to Argentina since? No, I haven't. No. Do you have plans to? Yeah, someday I'd love to go back. You should. Um, thank you for telling that story. I think that's really inspirational. What is something that not many people know about you? Um, hmm. I don't know. You could tell me anything. I don't know anything about you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think most people know a lot about me. Oh, um, great. I mean, that's not great, <laughs> <laughs> but you could tell me a lot. Just yeah, just because I'm kind of I'm more of a closed off person. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not a very social person. So and that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe one thing is that I'm not very confident. <laughs> that I'm uh, pretty uh, unsure of myself in a lot of ways. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you're looking for something more specific than that. Well, that's brought that's been brought up like a couple times in this conversation. So, mm -hmm. for someone who doesn't feel confident, and I'm sure that a lot of people in our ward are mm -hmm. like feel the way you do and feel kind of like uncomfortable in conversations. So, what advice would you give them? Um, and even me sometimes, like, what would you give us? What advice would you give us if we're feeling unsure about ourselves? Um, What's helped you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm qualified to give that kind of advice. I guess just um, don't worry about it. Just, uh, I don't know. I feel like that used to bother me a lot more when I was younger. Um, but, you know, going like, especially like serving my mission where like that was never one of my strengths, even to the end, I wasn't like very good at striking up a conversation and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I learned to be okay with that about myself, to be kind of, uh, to just accept more like that's who I am and that's not really a bad thing. Like it's okay to, to not be the most social person in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, ever since then, I, I haven't really let it bother me. Yeah. And that reminds me of the body of Christ and how like one person may be really good at conversation and then other people might be good at listening. Mm -hmm. So we all make up the kingdom and mm -hmm. we, we get to use our own strengths and I'm sure you have gifts that other people don't have. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's really some impactful advice. It's simple, but also very, very true and wise. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? To um, that? Well, just, yeah, just to add to that, um, <clears throat> on my mission, like, uh, yeah, like that, that's, I, I learned that lesson. Like, um, I had a lot of companions who were great at like getting people to like, really like them. They could just walk in and, and make friends with everybody they met. I was never that person, but I still think that there were a lot of people that I met and I was able to help specifically because of who I am and not because I, not because I needed to be like them necessarily. Mm -hmm. I felt that way on my mission a lot. Um, I just felt like I always had to be like my companion, you mm -hmm. know, and I, it was comparison is the thief of joy. That joy, that was like a, a main thing I learned. And then at the end, I was like, why was I trying to be someone else the whole time? Like mm -hmm. I was always the missionary I needed to be. And if we're always where we need to be, then God's going to make sure that we're going to touch those people that we need to touch. Yeah. So I agree. Um, okay. What, what's a secret talent you have? <laughs> secret talent? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not very talented. Uh, oh my. <laughs> I can kind of play the piano. Not, not like super well, but I can kind of play. Um, I can. You could play in sacrament maybe. Mm, I, I could probably maybe. <laughs> like one or two songs. I, I am actually kind of rusty too. I couldn't play like super complicated, but I could play well enough 
I think that you could sing along to it. Um, not that I'm volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can. Uh, I've been learning to wake surf. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm getting decent at that, I think. That's hard. Yeah, it was super hard at first. I could barely stay up for like more than a second. Um, but yeah, now I can usually stay up like, unless there's like some super choppy waves, I'll usually just stay up. <clears throat> or if I try to do anything flashy, I don't know. Like my brother, he's really good. He he can do like a whole like 360 on the board. I don't know how people sometimes. do that. Yeah, it's crazy. I, every time I try, I fall in, but <laughs> until I try. <laughs> Where do you I practice? Well, I, right now I don't practice anywhere, but usually I'll just go wake surfing with my family, mm -hmm. um, like in Willard Bay or something. Fun. Okay. So what is your, I have so many questions. Okay. Do you have a favorite memory? Um, I know that's such a vague question. That is kind of vague, or yeah. I could ask, what is one of the first memories that you have? Um, I don't know. First memories. I don't know. This, <laughs> you can't think of anything. <laughs> I I remember like it's hard to say like what my first memories would be. I have a memory. I don't know why it's so distinct in my head of just like being a little kid and like following my mom around the house and she was doing whatever and then just being like hey how old am i and she was like you're four and i was like oh okay i'm four and <laughs> that's I was like, so cute that was like the first i remember knowing how old i was really i don't know why i remember that so specifically you need to remember that so that you <laughs> knew you were four and then up until then you know like what age you were i don't know that's so funny <laughs> well that's cool my favorite memory or not my favorite memory my first memory i was in california and my family my dad and i we were sitting um in a, in a hot tub and my first memory is i'm stepping on all these snails with my dad i'm like three yeah okay. that's my first memory very interesting <laughs> but that's my first memory okay so what would be your perfect day um i don't know just uh right now since i'm so busy with school perfect day is just a day where I don't have to do anything, just not have to worry about homework yeah. or anything. What if you were done with school? If I was completely done with school, I don't know. Perfect day would probably be going out and doing something fun with my friends or with my family. Um, eating some good food, coming back in, playing games, just doing whatever. Watch a movie, maybe. Very um, chill. Yeah, yeah. Happy-go-lucky guy. It seems uh, like. Sure. <laughs> sure, sure. What are your favorite activities? Um, like I said, I, I like uh, wake surfing. I like swimming, too. Cool. Um, <clears throat> uh, I like reading. I like watching movies. I like uh, playing games, board games, video games, any kind. Um, just hanging out. I don't know. Just... Yeah. I don't know. Even though, even though this is kind of like, I feel like, what's the word? Kind of contradictory. Because uh, I was saying, like, I'm not a big conversation guy, but mm -hmm. I like talking to people too, like just talking with my family and with my friends, just about whatever. Are you one of those people that when you get to know someone, you kind of get out of your shell and. Yeah, I think so. That's kind of how I am too. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. I think having a good conversation is, it's very fulfilling, especially mm -hmm. with friends and family, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. If I'm like still in my shell, then I don't like talking to people. But if, if I'm more open, then I, then I do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for opening up in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I do have another question. So... What do you want your legacy to be? Hmm. Like I, if it was your last day on earth or you knew it was going to be your last day on earth and you had like one piece of advice that you would have to um, give to or 
not one piece of advice, like just what you'd want people to remember you by. Okay. What would you want that to be? Um, <clears throat> I want to be remembered as just a good person, somebody who was kind to other people, who just had a good positive impact on the lives of people around me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay anything else that you would like to add um i don't think so okay where did you grow up that was on me on here uh, just just here in ogden just here in ogden. Yeah, I grew up in north ogden I went to Uber high okay yeah well this is jace murdoch and it was really fun to get to know you i feel like yeah, like I said, you have this very quiet confidence about you. And thank you for all your advice that you've given us and also um, opening up to let the ward and me get to know you a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was fun being up here. Okay. See you next week. <laughs>